Hello, welcome to this video on adding content to your Orlo reading list. We're going to be covering adding books, articles and websites, using headings and notes and publishing your list. We won't be talking about digitizations or scans or creating a list from scratch. Those are covered in other video tutorials. Before we start, it's recommended that you use Chrome or Firefox web browsers when you're adding content to your Orlo reading list. Safari and Edge are not recommended. Don't worry, your student will be able to use any browser to access your reading list. This recommendation is just for those who are actually adding content. We also recommend that you use the VPN when you're adding content to Orlo from off campus. If you can't use the VPN, it's not absolutely essential, but it will give you more accurate and reliable links. So if possible, please do use the VPN. So let's get started. So this is Orlo and the first thing you always need to do is to sign in with your Oxford single sign on. I've already signed in, which is why my name is here, but normally it would have sign in there. If you're new to Orlo, you'll need to install something called the bookmark button. And what that does is it allows you when you're browsing solo or scholarly databases or websites to grab the details of books and articles and other materials that you find and add them directly to your list. So it saves you a lot of time because you don't need to type in all those details. You can just capture them. That button lives in a bar in the bookmarks bar, which runs beneath this URL bar here. And on my computer, it's not currently displaying. So to display it, you need to go to the menu button at the end here. And in the menu, you're looking for bookmarks and then show bookmarks bar. And that gives you this extra line where we've got bookmarks. This is my home computer I hasten to add. But what I need to do is to put the all o bookmark button into this bar. So to do that, I'll go to my bookmarks and then install bookmark button. That's just giving me some information about the bookmark button. And then this is the button itself. And I need to click on it and holding down the mouse, drag it up to my bookmarks bar and then just release it. And you can see that now I have an extra bookmark here called add to my bookmarks. So that's done. And once I've done that, I shouldn't need to do it ever again unless I use a different computer or a different web browser. So now I want to get into my list and start creating content. So I'm going to go to my lists and every list that you have access to will be listed here. And you need to just choose a particular list. So I've set one up, which is just for playing about with during this video called practicing. So here we are in the list. And the first thing I'm going to do is to add some headings. And those are called sections. So I'll add a section. And I'm going to call it week one. And then in the description here, I'm going to put this week, we will be considering and whatever. So there's a nice heading for week one. If I want week two, I need to be careful not to add that section within week one because that would make it a subsection. I need to put this blue bar so that it's completely beneath the existing week one section and then say add section and put week two, etc. If I do want subsections, I can do that. So in week one, I might want a subsection for say secondary resources or case studies or something like that. In which case, put the blue bar within week one and we'll say add section and let's make this one secondary sources. If they are in the wrong place, don't worry, on the edit menu at the end of each line, you can move them up or down very easily. If you want to add some more lengthy te text, maybe you've got some information to give to your students about an assignment or something like that, then add a paragraph. And here you'll see that you've got numbered lists and bulleted lists and bold italics, etc. And you can write a lot there. It doesn't have to be a single paragraph. You can write quite lengthy text if you wish. OK, so now let's add some actual items to the reading list. And to do that, I'm going to go to Solo. Now, at this stage, it's a good idea to connect to the VPN if you haven't done so already, because that will give you more reliable links. 
You'll also want to sign into Solo um, because that will ensure that you have access to everything that's on Solo. And we do recommend that if possible, you do add all of your bookmarks from Solo because if you use Solo, it will make it will be kind of certain that your students are going to have access to the content. They, if they are prompted for a password, it will be the Oxford single sign on rather than a different password. So it's the most kind of reliable place to add bookmarks. So I've already searched for a book, Underground Engineering for Sustainable Urban Development, and the item that I wanted was the second one on the list. Here it is, and it's an ebook. It's got a green online access button, which means that anyone can access it with a single sign on. And I'm just going to click on it to link to that book. So you add your bookmark once you've got to the actual ebook. So on this page, I'm at the ebook and I'm just going to say add to my bookmarks. And this has come up with a dialog where all the bibliographic information about that book has been captured. And I can say create or create an add to list. For this first one, I'm going to do create to show you the difference. So I've said create and it's gone back to the ebook as if it hasn't done anything, but in fact it has. If I now go back into my reading list, I can say, well, I want to add a resource, a bookmark here. So I'll choose resource. And this is giving me a list of all the items that I've bookmarked ever with the most recent one at the top. So we can see here, that this is the one that I had, Underground Engineering. And I'm going to click on that and it's put it into my list with a nice view online button, which the students will click to get through to that ebook. Let's do another one. This time I'm going to look for an article and I'm going to search by the article title, which is Knowledge in the Age of Climate Change. Here it is, it's in the South Atlantic Quarterly, and I'm just going to click Online Access. Sometimes it will take you to this Find It at Oxford page. It doesn't matter which resource you choose. I'm going to choose Duke. And here it is. Now at this stage, don't be tempted to go into the PDF, because once you're in the PDF, you can't use the bookmark tool. So this is the page you want to bookmark. It has the full details of the item and it has the link to the PDF, but it isn't the PDF itself. So we'll add to my bookmarks. And again, it's captured all the bibliographic information. This time I'm going to try create an add to list. And it knows that I've got this particular list open and it says, where do you want to add it? I've got my sections here, so I'm going to put it in secondary sources and at the bottom of that section and I can just say OK. Now if we just want to test that, if I go back into my list and refresh, we can see that it has indeed added it at the bottom of that section. So I'm going to do one more from Solo, which is another book, Energy and Mobility in Smart Cities. And having looked quite carefully through Solo earlier, I know that this book isn't available as an ebook at the moment. It's only available as a print book. I can still add it to my list and we might be able to request a digitization, for example. Um, but if I want to add a print book to the list, what I need to do is from Solo, click on the title of the book or click on Find and Request so that I'm on the page which lists where the item is held. So I'm on the page now that gives all the details and tells me it's in the Radcliffe Science Library. And from this page, I can add to my bookmarks, create and add to list. And again, let's have it at the bottom of secondary sources. So we prefer you to add things from Solo if you can, but sometimes, of course, something won't be on Solo and you'll be able to add from other sources such as scholarly databases. But you can also add web pages. So I'm going to find the web page of the UN Climate Change Conference. And maybe there's something on this page which is going to be useful for my students. Maybe down here. So I'm just going to add to my bookmarks. 
and this should work for most websites. So it knows that it's a web page, it's picked up the title and the web address. Sometimes when you're bookmarking web pages, the title can be not very good. It might just say home or something like that. If that happens, you can overtype what's in any of these boxes. Um, and we'll add that one as well. Let's put that in week two. OK, so what else can we do? So we can, for example, indicate to the students how important a particular item is. So this top one, I'm going to say that's essential. They really must read that one. Maybe this next one is recommended. So that's very simple. I can also add notes for students. So from the menu here, I can say note for students and I can put read chapter five, for example. And I can write quite lengthy text if I want to. And I can also add notes for the library. So this book here was the one which was only available in print, and I could say please buy as an ebook. And the library notes won't be viewable to your students, but the library staff will see them, so that can be quite useful. This is also the place where you could request a digitization if you wanted a chapter of the book scanned. I'm not going to go into that now because there's a whole video on, on, on doing that, but just to flag that that's an option. OK, so when your list is done, it's really important to publish it. Until it's published, your students won't be able to see it. The library will be able to see it, but your students won't be able to. Once you've published it, you will need to make sure that it's embedded in your Canvas site or, or you might be emailing a URL for it to your students or putting a link to it on your website. Just make sure your students can get to it either through Canvas or through a link. Ask your librarian if you need help with that. So what happens if you've published your list and then you want to make changes? That's absolutely fine. You just come into Orlo and you go to My Lists because that's where we found the list and you'd open it again. And then in here I can start editing it. So let's um, add that note for the students and save. But it's really important to republish at that point because otherwise the change I've made will be viewable to me as the list owner, but it won't be viewable to the students and so they won't know what to read. So try to remember to do that. It's very easy to forget it. So that's the end of this tutorial. Thank you very much for listening. If you have any queries or if you have any problems with Orlo, please don't hesitate to contact your library and they will be able to help you. Thank you very much. Goodbye.